In this example, we're going to calculate DH parameters of forward kinematics for the spherical wrist. This is just going to be the last three joints of a six axis articulated arm. So joint three, which points out of the page, or joint four, which spins longitudinally, joint five, which spins out of the page, and joint six, which is longitudinally. So just kind of give you an example, this box corresponds to this. So we have it grounded. That ground is really just this link right here. So for the procedure, step one is find the joint axes. Step two, is assign the coordinate frames. So we'll put in the X. Three is fill out the DH table. Theta D A alpha for each coordinate frame. And then step four, we could get the transformations. All of those together, end up, multiply, get the final. So for Z axes, let's see, okay. So we need the ground axis, which would be the point up here, direction of rotation. So this is Z three. And then We'll say that Z4, because this joint rotates in that direction, we also have Z4. Now Z5 points here. Along this axis. And then Z6 again points up. So Z5 is the only one that points in a different direction, and that's because joint five, which is this one, rotates in that direction. This is joint four, joint five, joint six of the robot. So here we have, this one is joint four, this is joint five, this is joint six. So next, the coordinate frames. Well, in general, X has to point perpendicular. Now we can see that the Z axes all intersect. At this point, some of the Z's point up, one of the Z points left. So then the X axis needs to point perpendicular to those. So we'll come out. So this is X3, and we'll say that so we have actually a height of this joint. So X4 will be top of here. So these are that height apart. Then X5 comes out of the page and X6, we wanna put this at the tippy top, X6. Well, next we need to fill out table of DH parameters. So the angle, between from frame four, so we need to get from three to four, it is this angle, theta four. We also know that theta five spins like this and theta six spins like that. So when joint four rotates, then the coordinate frame for three, because that's the ground, will remain static, but coordinate frame for four will rotate with the joint. So then those axes will be separated by theta four. Now then when joint five rotates, X five will start to point up. X four will be relatively in the same spot. Well, it's theta five. And then finally, theta six compared to theta five, when joint six rotates, X6 is going to start turning into the page and it will separate from X5 by theta six. 
Now this pattern that you notice here, usually if each joint is revolute and then that angle is going to be theta. And if the joint is prismatic, the angle is usually zero or it would be a constant value. So next for D, we can actually label these. So this is angle between X's, distance between X's, distance between Z's, and angle between Z's. So to get the D values, let's see what are those distances. Well, to get from frame three to frame four, between the X's, we went up by H3. Then to get from four to five, we went up by L4. To get from five to six, we went up by L5 plus H6. Then the distance between the Z axes, it looks like these Z axes all intersect. So these will just be zero. Also, we've used up all those distance parameters, so that's another clue. Then finally, angle between the Z axes. Well, Z3 and Z4 point in the same direction. No difference between those. But Z5 is perpendicular to those. So we need to see that angle. We go from up to the side, that's gonna be 90 degrees. And then to tell if it's plus or minus, look at the x-axis. That is a counterclockwise rotation around the x-axis. So that is positive 90 degrees. And then to get from Z5 to Z6, we went in the opposite direction. So that will be negative 90 degrees. Now, if we wanted to find the transformations, say we were given values for these and we need to find the exact position of the end effector, then we could put the parameters into the transformation matrix. So to get the transformation to the end effector, which here would be T six relative to three, we would need to know T four relative to three, which we use frame four parameters, times T5 relative to four, where we use frame five parameters, times T6 relative to five, where we use six parameters. So remember, for DH parameters, they're always given relative to previous frame.